All right. Well, we'll get into a little more wedding talk and a little post-wedding talk and uh, things of that nature. Also have some uh, thoughts. I was at the Natalia's volleyball game uh, last night. There's also um, a little walk down memory lane with uh, Paul Harvey. Oh, my God. Because um, quite a show. Chris Max Pata. Did not know who Paul Harvey was. Oh, that's a shame. And uh, we ended up uh, walking around Chicago and got onto like Paul Harvey Boulevard. <laughs> Probably a little less crime than Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yeah, hard to say. Or, or uh, Cesar Chavez Boulevard, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. I in mean, general. We have to, do, we you, have to, we have to study we the have statistics. To pull some FBI statistics, <laughs> but I'm just going to go with the Paul yeah. Harvey Boulevard. Probably less gang related shootings, but. We, uh, we, uh, he didn't know who it was, so oh. I started sort of trying to lay it out to him as best I could. But I told him, like, go grab one of those, and now you know the rest of the story yeah. bits. Cause and going, I am Paul Harvey, page yeah. eight. And they were enjoyable. And it's a bygone era, but uh, it kind of shows you certain things, you know, progress is fine, but certain things worked and are kind of timeless. So yeah. we'll get into that. Uh, so I was at the volleyball game. Uh, I came up with uh, a strategy I like. Um, I like to uh, I like to game the system a oh, little bit. There you go. Uh, I realized this is a good move for any parent who has their kid in school and has to attend uh, open house oh, night or parent teacher conference don't do tell. or or whatever. Oh. I am telling you. Um, now it might not work for me, and it might not work for Bald Brian, mm-hmm. but and or Gina, but there's a version of this that works. Okay. Um, if you are the parent and you have to go to the volleyball game late in the afternoon, or you have to go to the parent-teacher thing or open house, which mm-hmm. takes place in the early evening, mm-hmm. uh, do yourself a favor. Get yourself a set of surgical scrubs okay. and some, um, some Crocs mm-hmm. or some kind of clogs mm-hmm. And uh, if you'd like to, uh, to put the accoutrements, like a stethoscope around the neck or something like that. Tongue depressor th- in the pocket. Do that. And then you arrive. Okay. Two things are achieved. One is everyone thinks you're a fucking winner because they think you're a thoracic surgeon. Right. Right, they, right they, from they, the OR. Right. Secondly. You need to scrub out. It's a, you had to scrub out. <laughs> Usually scrub in, but now you had to scrub out of a surgery. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, first off, it shows a level of commitment. Look, you could have been on the sofa beating off to you porn all day, but put the scrubs on mm-hmm. at six fifteen and make the pilgrimage to the school. Uh, and a shows you broke away from something important That's to right. be there mm-hmm. for your kids. You left work. Yes. You were not lounging about the house. Show up a t-shirt and sweatpants. Mm-hmm. You've been around the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a, you get that. B, you get cred, not only with the school teachers, but all the other parents that you're this, huh? you know, mm-hmm. very trained, very educated, important person. Yeah. Pillar uh, of the community. Number two or three, when you have to get out of further uh, commitments that have to do with the school, you're always covered because it'll be established that you're you're yeah. a busy right. person. You're in demand. You're on you're, call. You're on call. As long as there's no heart attacks or nobody needs a, an emergency trach, you're fine. I know. That's where you go the wrong way. It's like, oh no, he's grabbing his chest. <laughs> you're pounding on his thigh, yelling, "Live! <laughs> Damn it, live! Damn you!" <laughs> mouth to mouth into the urethra. Yeah, it, it'd be good if. Uh, Again, you know, if you have to remember the name of a hospital, you know what I mean? Yeah. And even if you get busted, here's what I found out about hospitals. You can go Huntington Memorial and then someone will go, my my dad is the director of uh, physicians. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, and, and this is in Arlita. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a Huntington yeah. Satellite. Memorial. It's satellite. This is in Redlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Redlands. Right. You can move That's the good. hospital Diamond around with bar. the same, yeah. same name. Privileges. That's yeah, it's really it's good. Thing. Right, but show Mark. up with those scrubs, man. <laughs> you will be not only considered a winner, but a concerned winner. That's a great idea, seeing as how I have to go to basketball practice today next to Cedar sinai This is a good move. I Scrub up. Yep. Oh, they're going to think you're a nurse. That's true. I meant to ask you, you got a nice little place in the valley. Why mm-hmm. does the boy do the, all the, the Beverly Hills, uh, the school and the whatever? Because it's his, a hall for people out of the it area. It sure is, because that is the district his mother is in. Aha. So, no, 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 I have no follow-up yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> we just do a lot of driving. The uh, other thing I, I thought of, by the way, this is me watching volleyball, but I'm, you know, 
got my head on a swivel sure. looking for the winner dads. Mm -hmm. You can tell the dads that are coming from work versus the I got nothing to do all day, stay at home. I got here at noon. You dads. slept till just then. <laughs> right. So you want to be with the winner dads. So get a profession and dress according. Right. Uh, the other thing, w which was uh, gymnasium. Crowded, by the way. Oh. They love their women's volleyball. Wow. Exciting team sport, working together, lots of communication, close games. Volleyball, sweet. It's sweet. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a fun sport to watch in person. And I would argue that is one of a number, but a fewish number of sports, maybe like swimming, where there's no drop-off between men and women. Mm, Most yeah. fellas oh, yeah. would rather watch the NBA than the WNBA. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to volleyball, it's all out the window. Yeah. Is there, like, I know there's, like, beach volleyball and stuff, but I can't think of, like, a men's volleyball team inside. I mean, the yeah. Olympics, Did of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't think. I Come think on, of Karch Karai listens Thank to you. the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's, what's his name, Dollhauser, but that's all, like, beach, beach volleyball. Yeah. There are there is men's, but it's not a nearly as popular. Yeah. It's one of those sports where it's much like more popular yeah. with, the women's with game women. Is, yeah, so at least it's popular a more. Right. All right. So uh, there's that observation. The other one was uh, when I got there. It's a big cavernous old '60s style gym, and uh, they're just pumping the jam. I, I recorded it and <laughs> nice. sent it to uh, Chris. But here it is. This is pregame. <laughs> No one knows what he's saying. My, my, it's making my eye twitch. It's super annoying. Yeah. It's super grating. And it is now the soundtrack of our lives. Just <laughs> by the way. The, the song, Adam, it's called Death. <laughs> and it's by Trippy Red featuring the baby. Uh huh. I knew it. And uh, I now. I $5. By the way, I was going to say there's not a black face in the crowd because mm -hmm. that's, that's the demo. Mm -hmm. There was. One man of color mm -hmm. who had something going on, and I don't know where you guys come down on this, but um, balding and dreads. It's a it's oh, a, it's a yeah. tough oh, the pot. Stevie Wonder yeah. look. Yeah, yeah, it is not it is not good. And now Stevie has the dreads, but the dreads just kept getting pulled back further yeah. and further They're and further. This is like the monk's crown. Balding. No, no. This is what I saw is in so what Stevie. It looked like Stevie had his dreads tied off to a rail and he grew three inches and they just <laughs> they kept, kept pulling, pulling yeah, they just yep. kept pulling back. This was much more scattershot. This was a kind of male pattern baldness on the back with some up front and then it just the falling dreads, down wow. along the sides. Kind of like Predator. A little bit, not a good look. Wow. And like at some point, I uh, there's there's a women's hairdo version of this yeah. the super long bleach blonde like certain point you hit fifty three you got to give up the ghost yeah cut you it off give it get up. a bob so uh, there was that uh, then I started thinking about this super annoying music now by the way I was there for a half hour before the game started because uh, that's times are irrelevant now it's like get, get there at five and you get there at five and it starts at five twenty five but you either talk way for nine minutes about volleyball and I've yet to discuss volleyball I know <laughs> well the volleyball was great very great uh it was uh competitive back and forth and until you didn't play rolled the ankle rolled the ankle Aww. but I will tell you this almost as equally satisfying watching your child on the sideline up on their feet, leading the cheers. Volleyball has five or six different slap on the sure. ground, everyone down, mm -hmm. everyone up, point at the opposite crowd, you know, the opposite bleachers. Like mm -hmm. there is, they, they're girls. So they got that gene in them. Yeah, they're ready to cheer. And so they're ready to play, but they're also ready to yell and yeah. cheer and do everything in unison. I think that's and very, yes, we do. There's a lot of, in between everything, there's lots of high fives and comes together and everyone's sort of hugging mm -hmm. on each other. Uh, the, the difference between men and women, for sure, is um, when it's a crucial side out and the person serves and just whacks it into the net, they're all congratulations. Oh, yeah. all like, Guys, 
If you did that in front of Ray, he well, would chase you around well, the fucking <laughs> gym and pull your, pull, give you a fucking wedgie like you've never seen before. There, especially when it's real crucial time, like yeah. you're down by point, you got the side out, you hit it in the net. They're all oh, equally so nice and hugs this and enthusiastic. Is, it's like Family Feud rules. Somebody says right. something and saying, "Good answer, good right. answer." Right. Wait. So you went to watch a volleyball game that your daughter wasn't even participating in. Yes, different wow. school. The, uh, what? the sport was great. I mean, the the com- the the competitive spirit of both sides yeah. was fun. The enthusiasm was fun. The parents were loud. Uh, the place was pretty close to capacity. Damn, it was it was it it was exciting. The music, that fucking music. That music was now weaponized because I was in this anti-acoustic cavern mm. and it was just bouncing all over the fucking place, and. You heard the song three times. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Literally, literally it bounced uh, around the gym. But then I hearkened back to just last weekend when we were um, walking in Chicago. And uh, I said, uh, where are we eating? Where are we eating? So the drill is go out, do the show, and then find a steakhouse to unwind at mm-hmm. after the show. That is the carrot at the end of the stick of uh, long days of travel and uh, and performing. And uh, we're always looking for a place we can sit down and relax and enjoy a martini and a steak. And bars stay open until four in Chicago. Well, we were informed that uh, Matt had made a reservation at STK. Oh, yeah. And uh, I thought, that sounds familiar. I think I've heard of that one. That sounds good. Well, it was, but right? We're out here anyway. Well, Mike then informed me when I informed him we were going to STK. He goes, remember when we went to New York after one of your shows like 10 years ago and we went out with Danny Two Sheets and a few other people and we went to a steakhouse and we couldn't fucking hear each other and we were (laughs) screaming at each other across the table. And it was. And the poor waitress was having to do the specials. This is a table of five. She had to go to both sides because you couldn't fucking no. hear the it's special. Brutal. She yeah. was just fucking yelling and spittle everywhere and she was going hoarse and then no one at the other side of the table could hear the special so you had to walk it over that. He said, uh, that's S-T fucking K. And I'm like, ugh. you gonna be fucking annoyed all night. Like they literally have a DJ there. Yeah. I don't, I, I again, Look, everyone, it's like when I got into the cab in Minneapolis and uh, the 50-year-old guy was pumping the soccer music. Mm-hmm. Soccer. 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 It's, 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 a, it's Calypso on acid meets reggaeton yeah. meets it's mariachi <laughs> meets elect, electronic music. It's like, okay. Uh, and he was doing the, uh, I'm like, what is this song? Why is this in this cab? Why is this song? Why? Why? It's, just, it's just you and I. It's yeah. at night. We're old, you know? And he's like, it is when they, uh, the man and a woman, you know, they make love, you know? <laughs> they come to, I'm like, am I fucking your ear, old man? <laughs> what? I Yes, it's for a man and a woman when they make love. That's not us. <laughs> you're, you're, you're hitting on me? Yes, you're... This is, there's none of that going on in this cab. So my feeling is like, I'm not saying there's no place for it, mm-hmm. although for me, there's few places for it. But what I'm saying is, is don't pump it into a Detroit sports bar. Mm-hmm. Don't pump it into a steakhouse. It's, it's, a place. Yeah, it's, it's 11 at night. People want to have a martini yes. and a conversation at mm-hmm. this point. Ambient music, by all means. Perfect. Little get a jazz. Little, get a little Sinatra yeah. or some classic jazz going. Whatever you like. But let's not fucking annoy the fuck out of everyone with mm-hmm. your shitty electronic music, which is now ubiquitous because everyone just wants to be cool. Yes. For, furthermore, uh, th- this is not directed at any one person, but just curious. You're in Chicago, land of great old school red velvet steakhouses. They're 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 on every block practically downtown. Why SDK, which is essentially just like a, a trendy Ruth's Chris, like a chain. I mean, I'm sure they have fine steaks. Don't get me wrong, but, but you're, you're right, in the land of steakhouses. Yeah. You're at effectively a, a, a Morton's. Tried Gibson's full. Oh. Uh, conversation okay. of how close can we walk it from the hotel? Yeah, yeah sure. we we tried. Believe me, I always go Red Naga Hide 
classic. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's wearing a bow tie, works there. There's I a love wine, that shit. There's a wine locker. Yeah. There's one angel. Yeah. Well, also, I, I mean, certain certain things aren't broke. Like steakhouses just aren't broke. They're never mm -hmm. broke. They're what you mm -hmm. want. You know what I mean? You want that old guy who's memorized the menu, who's got the bow ties, got the white waiter. captain's jacket mm -hmm. on. Wheels over the Caesar salad. Yes, you want the you want the Table music, yeah. you want the ambiance, you want the decor. Like it just ain't broken. Yeah, we're looking at the SDK <sighs> Steakhouse. It's this classic. Uh, sorry, classy mac and cheese, trendy upscale, and then it says loud and DJ <laughs> under it. Yeah. And, and that sounds then, like your vibe. Yeah, this is Yelp. Those are the icons. Well, trying to tell people loud. <laughs> it's so weird going to eat and not being able to have a conversation. It's very stressful. Who? Okay, couple things. You don't go to eat to a nice steakhouse alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very rarely. Very but. rarely. <laughs> you go there with somebody, mm -hmm. possibly with couples or something. Maybe there's a, an Clients. event, a graduation mm -hmm. client. Don't you want to talk at the steakhouse? Yeah, whether it's a date or a client, you're often trying to woo somebody. Yes. You need to be able to hear. So uh, there was that, but now it's filtered its way into the girls' gymnasium, mm -hmm. and it's just everywhere. And I'm also wondering, like, are people getting thick? Like, to, <laughs> we they're physically getting yes. thick, but I just mean mentally, are they getting thick? I, I'll, uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah. You take uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. Take the Germans. If they're, we must. They're very nuanced. You take a look at their automobiles. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of big flaps and wings and crazy shit like the Italians. The color palette is smooth. It's, no, it's flamboyant. Yeah, it's it, the architecture. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. See how a German guy dresses, you know what I mean? There's a kind of um You could say the same thing probably with Japanese culture, a little yeah. more reserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except for once they go off the reservation. Oh, that's <laughs> the, on look the out. extreme, you're right. Bukaki right. and a squatted <laughs> Acura with a well, six foot well. Have you been to Harajuku? I don't think so. The German Scheiser videos, once you get to the extremes, then it well, all gloves are Whenever off. there's a culture that's a little buttoned down yeah. and a little more streamlined, <laughs> under the service. once you get off that <laughs> reservation, yeah. then you end up like someone who grew up in Salt Lake City and is now going against the family. <laughs> yeah. That's where on all, the Sunset Strip. That's where the hood piercing comes that's in. That's right. Okay. So uh, they're just a little. Typically. And uh, they they they're more nuanced. Now, then you go over to Mexico. It is a completely different palette Lack of over there. The music is fucking hitting you in the face. Think about the color palette. Mm, bright, you, vibrant. You don't see lime green on the face of houses very often. Go to Mexico. You just like it is like. Think about the Mexican telenovela. Mm -hmm. Just it's all boobs Play, and the music. Play, yeah, understated. just like it's just like pushing you. It's like hitting you in the yeah. face. They even have a really popular talk show called uh, I think it's La Flaca y la Gordo, like the, the skinny and the fat. Right. Yeah. Not a lot of nuance. Yeah, we like them young and restless. <laughs> they like them either skinny. <laughs> Or fat. Yeah. So you think about it. Well, maybe what's different? Well, all right. Let's look at the space program and the contributions made to the space program of Germany versus Mexico. It's a little different emphasis on things. I have to look it up. A little bit. Yeah. I could probably save you a few okay. minutes, but we won't get into the gory details. I'm wondering if we're thickening up here. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a lot more in your fucking face yeah. now. And the reason you got to get harder into someone's face is because you got to penetrate. Yep. And yeah, right. when you're getting into the aforementioned Japanese and German culture, there's not that thick veneer to penetrate. We need shit like fucking everything's extreme and where it's not enough that you just have uh, a taco. The taco shell has to be made of Dorito mm -hmm. material like that is pow. I mean, that's what kids like. Yeah. Right. So we're taking a turn for the thickening. Is what I'm saying. I think you're right. And it, I don't think this is a like, get off my lawn, you know, we're just getting older, so we're more sensitive to it. I think you're actually onto something because I know people are going to say that. We then, yes, we then moved on to Prime and Provision Steakhouse Ooh. and uh, still had the music blaring. Oh. That's that's just it. It's like there's just that is the new what I used to make fun of the new parsley by the side of the place is we got to crank up the jam. Like yeah. why? why? Everyone else Don't. is doing it because people are here yeah. and there's booze. We want to scare like, them away. Yeah, but who um who in this facility 
I here's here's here would be a good question. There's a uh, a hundred people eating inside this steakhouse. If I said to all one hundred of them who are attempting to fucking eat and have a conversation without blowing out their vocal cords, if I said uh, if I went to each table mm-hmm. and I said uh, you have uh, one of two options, there's no C, there's just A or B. Would you like the music? raised would you like the volume raised Mm -hmm. or would you like it lowered i am convinced that at least 85 of the 100 would like it lowered it makes sense because you look at the demo you look at the the bracket the age group and stuff Mm -hmm. and they're trying to have a conversation we're not rolling at a fucking rave (laughs) i would say 85 percent of them would ask that the music be lowered now if that's going to be the answer then, then why then, not? Then we've arrived at our conclusion. Is it a turnover thing, like the way at Disneyland? Oh, trying the music, to get them out? Yeah, like the music gets faster when they want you to start leaving the park. Like, do you think they just don't want you lingering? I hmm. mean, what what is it? why? I, I I like okay. Now we ate. We can go somewhere quiet and have a drink and talk. I I just think there's conventions. It's the parsley, and it's just it is of the time, and yeah. that's just what we do. And nobody because there's. Again, if you get up and complain about it, and this is really why it's caught on. If you get up, you know, if you get up and complain about it, you, there's there's two roads, two possible roads to go down. And and most likely you will go down both of them. You are being called old mm-hmm. and semi-racist. Mm. It is simultaneously a culture thing and an old thing. And... In these modern times, the greatest accusation that someone could level against you is you being old and racist or old or racist. And this covers both those bases. Who amongst us wants to seem like Grandpa Walton who's trying to take a nap? That's what it is. Old is... Horrible, racist is worse, and those that's what's implied with both of them. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Right. All right. Um we uh, let's see what I have here, uh, Max Zapata. Um, yeah, so we it's it's not escapable. I'm hoping I'm hoping it it comes back the other way. Um, what, kind of steak, what kind of steak did you get? Let's see. What the hell did I get? We got we bought we got the ribeyes. Oh, that time. we got the ribeyes. Like Let me guess. What? Medium rare. Adam gets medium. August and I split a medium rare and uh, yeah, wood fired grill, dry Ooh. aged. It was awesome. The two hungriest men on earth split a medium. Well, a steak. it's the size of a Winnebago. A <laughs> well, we yeah. got the surf and turf. We split that. Uh, of course. <laughs> and Chris ate the shell. Yes, yes. So and also, August at the things. Yeah, they some guy stopped buying with. Is that the stoned pelican? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> The other thing that I, I found through uh, traveling the highways and the byways, you know, we've been to Chicago, we've been to Detroit recently, we've been all over this man's country and done many a uh, late night steakhouse mm-hmm. run. Uh, clientele, late night steakhouse, um, disproportionately black and then white. Huh. Never seen an Asian in there. Hmm. And I thought this it was all over, all over the, all hmm. over the country. Interesting. And I, there's a couple things I put together. I always have thoughts. Uh, but I even have another thought to graft onto this. Uh, the folks doing the best financially, Asians. Mm-hmm. The steakhouse. And by the way, these weren't people celebrating birthday parties. These are just us. We're just fucking, we're going to go spend 700 bucks on a meal. It, it's, it's a, it, look, it, However much money you have, you're not getting that back. There's no return on investment oh. on that. Right. They're just, just pure enjoyment. throwing money yeah. away. It's just pure pure enjoyment, tossing money away. I thought it was interesting that the group that is making the most per capita and doing the best and the highest educate, nary an Asian face. That's how you stay rich right. in, in, those, in those places. Because it is really, it's a place where you go to spend 26 bucks on a shrimp cocktail right. and 14 bucks on a highball. Like it is a huge fat fucking waste of money. Dionysian. Now, yeah. I go there because I go, look, we just fucking worked. We made a bunch of money. Yeah. We can go here and, and, and celebrate. But it is Max Matt, am I exaggerating this? Th- thinking back. No. Yeah. I'm the only Asian in that, in that place. So. <laughs> right. It's weird. It's interesting. Don't see the, Hispanic families no. don't see the Asian families. 
black dis uh, not dis but it's not like eighty percent black. It's yeah. if black is thirteen percent of the population, it's twenty three percent of the of the steakhouse, yeah. and then the rest is white. Well, Adam, I certainly hate to shit on your point, but um, when my mom came in, she really wanted to go to Outback Steakhouse. Mm. So, and there Where do were, you find one? There is one in Burbank at the Empire Center, uh. and there were plenty of Mexican families. So I hate to shit on your point. Ah, Outback, yeah, <laughs> available, <laughs> price price sensibly. <laughs> All right, Gina. What should SDK and the W? Right. Let's talk about you and your wedding. I first of all, can I just say thank you guys for coming? I mean, oh, it seemed the best. I, I didn't realize when you're in the wedding, you don't get to participate in jack shit. Nope. But it sounded like people were having a good time. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. so that's that's really all I had to go on. Um, a couple of things I did. I did do all the music, and I was very sensitive to two things. A, I want it jazzy. I want it light. I want it quiet. And B, I emailed the DJ in advance asking where the speakers were going to be placed Smart. and put all the young people next to the speakers and kept, you know, people that were not as like, like for instance, both of your tables were on the opposite side. So away. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the music was great. I, thought, I you. loved your first dance song. I don't know what it is. I'm hoping you'll tell us. It, it is. It was uh, Mr. Rogers. It's you. I like, but sung by Holly Yarbrough. Oh. Mm-hmm. I thought it sounded kind of yeah vaguely. Yeah. Like, I don't know what this is. That was awesome. The, the dinner music was great. Everyone Thank was enjoying you. themselves. It I was, worked yeah. really hard on all that. Um, also, um, I, I wouldn't say a bone to pick, but just a couple of things I want to I want to address because I did listen to the last couple of days shows. Uh, mm-hmm. Teresa, bang up job. Um, first of all, I know you're exhausted, and I appreciate uh, your toast. Are you talking to Adam? Yes. Okay. <laughs> your toast was so. Amazing, a hundred percent, the best. It was like show-stoppingly awesome. Everybody loved it, the best. Two things: my wedding was on the books way before August decided to slip in this last little <laughs> weekend run out of town. So Very take true. that up with him. Very true. And B, I learned from the best. The best being you. And still talking about I'm still yeah. listening. When I, by the way, I can. This is the kind of criticism I like <laughs> for anyone who's listening who gives me frequent criticism. This is more the tone that I'm looking okay. for. Okay, so many free borders out there. Yeah, right? Everybody, grab a quill because I'm not done. So, I ha- I literally planned every second of this wedding. It was like a full time job. I needed it. I wanted it this way. After my dad died and after dealing with. Medicare and estates and family. I I needed, I still had all this planning energy and I didn't have anywhere to put it. So had that not happened, we probably wouldn't have had a wedding. So I was just like, I still have all this organizational energy and, and, and just frenetic energy. I need to put it into something joyous. So I plan, I did this around the clock. Now, when I asked you if you would be so kind as to say a few words, because I had so many things on my plate, when you said yes, I checked that off the list. I moved on to something else. Yeah, rightfully so. Thank you. So when I hear, well, she didn't check back in about it, so maybe I can sneak past this. No, no, no. I have a paper trail. I checked it off my list. Yeah, I didn't. I, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. Those inner child <laughs> hoping. Brain. Uh, yes, I don't. I get it. It's I, a fantasy I, I, at that point. I, I knew I was signed up Thank for you. it. It's just sometimes things are fluid. And I get Sometimes it. things change. No, it, it was so good. Thank the, you, you. You opened you fucking killed, and yet you, you you knew you had him after uh, you yelled at me about um, scheduling this the same day as the Rams game. Um, but I I loved having you guys there. I made my wishes known, which is not something I'm want to do. But instead of a welcome speech, I just told everyone I really want everyone to do the horror. Everybody mm-hmm. got in on it. I we have some video. Adam, I saw you race in there. We had Drew, we had Vinny, we had August. We had so much fun. We tried to do the dance. Then Andy and I up on those chairs with the napkin. Andy's so sweet, actually saved the napkin. And we had a blast. I've seen it at every Jewish wedding. I thought, oh God, that's the one thing I always wanted to do. So thank yes, you. And you thank got you for that. Hora approved chairs. Yes. Not folding chairs. I was looking at all the wood folding yeah. chairs going, I don't think we're gonna pull this no. off or someone's gonna lose gonna a lose knuckle. A finger, yeah. <laughs> right. But the Hora <laughs> chairs yes. had to be brought in. Yes. Fixed. Yeah. Now, do they have to be kosher, blessed by a rabbi? The chairs? Or, yes. Is there any chair protocol or is it just tinsel strength? Couldn't hoit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just any port in a storm that isn't collapsible. But you, those two were like 
Strong. Those, they grabbed those from the smoking porch, the smoking ah, patio, which okay, I said we good. needed because there was, I there, I wanted everything co- covered. At one point, Vinny said he may bring cigars. And I said to the venue, get the smoking patio because we have a guest can, that might want to have a cigar. Can I go with this? Yeah. Um, I like, uh, as, a, as a guy who likes tools and race cars and stuff, there's nothing better than uh, dedicated tools. Like yeah. this does this one thing. Mm-hmm. The uh, Jewish horror dance lift chair, yeah. which would be aluminum construction <laughs> and have handles on yes. it. Yes. Right? Arms. Because it's always like it's run, catch yeah, as catch every, can. Yes. First, you grab this steel behemoth, you're at 60 pounds before the bride <laughs> jumps true. on. You know what I mean? And, you know, one, one fucking finger's on the leg, the other's up her ass. That's you know, right. like. I think I did get fingered by somebody. Give us, mm. I'll let you smell it afterward. Okay. Give us a handle. Uh-huh. Give us something. Make it out of lightweight uh, Air chair. Force grade aluminum. Like a, like a, like the, the airport shuttle. There's like rails everywhere. Right. right. Has yeah, these chairs were, were sturdy and hefty. You could then. And the bride felt that way too. Little room for a plaque in the back with the with oh, the wedding okay. and the oh, couple and the sure. date. And that could sit nicely. It's your home and there's always a nice story. Okay. That's and, good. Don't just grab the cigar chairs. Yeah, the yeah, dedicated you're right. horror chair. You're right. yeah. It's also like a I'll six pack of cigars. <laughs> Ready to go. Um, I'm serious. Also, people see I, I was I was being told by people that they appreciated that overall it wasn't a super like typical slash somber event. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of humor. Not yeah. And so when we I, I didn't feel comfortable doing a father daughter dance because Andy's dad was there who's lovely, but eh. Eh, last minute, not interested. However, it gets you out of it. Yeah, I did want to do a a bride stepson dance, and I said he could pick any song in the whole world that he wanted. And of course, he picked not Super Mario Brothers the original, Super Mario Brother World, because Grandma just got him a Switch, and he's obsessed. So this is the song that he chose. A Switch. It's like a, like a Game switch. Boy thing. See, when your grandma would get you a, <laughs> get switch, you a switch, it was to beat your ass. <laughs> she said that all the time. Get like, the go switch. Get a stick. Go get outside and get a stick. <laughs> oh, my God. And she lived in Tahoe. That's so that was like a real thing. I was That's like, oh, right. shit. Yeah, because all the people over 45 were marveling at what a great stepmom you were and what a great <laughs> ride this is going to be versus our version of step parents right. from back in the day. And I think grandma got you a switch encapsulates yeah. exactly the differences. <laughs> Between the old school <laughs> wow. step parenting nothing, nothing, and the new vote. Nothing is, newer, nothing older. That's right. One hundred percent correct. So instead of, you know, like she gave me butterfly kiss, you know, we, we went with this for our dance. He rarely uh, was on his feet. This child, little Henry, oh my god. He was cut in a rug all night, show stopping, time of his life. I just danced around him as he did. It's there's a thing in Super Mario called like the Wiggler or Wiggler's War for whatever. So that's what he was doing. He oh. was you better hope that kid never goes epileptic. We wouldn't because know. The, we wouldn't know. Seizure. Everyone's just gonna be laughing and talking you're, to him. You're absolutely right. Um, and I think we have a couple of pictures. Uh, just just put up whatever, and uh, and I'll, I'll explain. We can put these on the website. Um, I I really appreciate this moment. I don't know who took this picture, but um, Andy and I have this joke, and we've even made this on the show. Like a valedictorian always starts a speech with. The dictionary. the dictionary defines success, uh, yeah. and that's a that's joke. Funny. Andy that's funny. was so scared that I was really going to do it. So that very was the moment. Funny. Yeah, very funny. Very funny opening. And, and it, 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 it's, it's how a joke should work, which is when you started your vows and said, the dictionary defines love as everyone went like, oh, mm-hmm. God. Yeah. But no one went, she's joking. <laughs> everyone just went, oh, boy. Um and that lasted for ninety minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. but then you kicked in, and that's where the that's where the laugh yeah. came in. So I wanted to kind of break the ice. This was I just I love this picture, or maybe it was a different one. I love that, of course. It's our first dance. Christy's taking a picture, picture of Brian, me. which Chris, is great. Oh, no, it's actually a video because you know why? I'm a I'm a big softy these days. Uh, Are and, you? Uh, Actually, after since radiation, I have trouble controlling my emotions all the time, and I was getting a little sniffly. Aww. And Christy was taking a video of you, and when I started, you know, she turned over to me to get me uh, crying. Christy, I need that <laughs> so immediately. So that, that is a video that will be shared with you. There's also this great picture where it's ju- it's Andy and I dancing in the middle, and framed perfectly around us is Susan, Doctor Drew. August and Adam kind of like on the peripheral and it is it's it's a great picture but the venue did all the work for us I mean it was so beautiful well look, I, look yeah. uh, you know it kind of reminds me of sometimes you go to somebody's house 
And it's maybe a moderate house in the valley, you know, built in the 50s, mm-hmm. no great shakes. And uh, you don't have a big backyard with a, with a water slide and a big pool and hardscaping or anything. But they, they go to Amazon, they get a string of lights and they string it up just right, oh, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and they get a couple of nice looking cacti from mm-hmm. Home Depot and put it in a pot that's You're a little bit our different. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's at night and they yeah. turn the lights mm-hmm. on and you kind of go, oh, it's so oh, it's it's like a so secret nice. garden. Like it seems really nice. And, you know, I don't know what this venue sets you back as opposed to a lot of people that are renting out big halls yeah. and you know all, we didn't all things, like, things of that nature but the weather was perfect yes. the, the the light was perfect the 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 floor and the fauna was yeah. like perfect great backdrop for and, and it just looked it just looked per- like you even if you'd thrown another f- 25 grand at it. I don't think you could have done better than that environment I agree. aesthetically. We went, that was the first place we looked. We said, we be, we'll be right back to sign the papers. We got to go look at these other two that were nice, but dog shit compared to just being in that mm-hmm. environment. It's a blueberry patch. It's an avocado grove. It was just, it was perfect. Um, just uh, grab another picture. Was, was it a working real quick. farm? Yes. Because there was a lot of produce there. There's, it's a working farm. Blueberry season mm-hmm. is over, but yes. Oh, that was our little sparkler exit, which was a lot of fun. And because I can't stop delegating, I even said the photographer will be gone by then. Kristen, my buddy Kristen, go find someone with an Android phone because I have an iPhone and they don't do the trick. So somebody captured that moment, which I love. And uh, let's keep scrolling real quick. Um, Oh, me and and the fam. And this picture makes me a little, um, gets me, gets me a little bit because this is my little family, my, my now husband and my official stepson. And that kid had the best day of his life. I mean, he was like the star star of the show. show. Oh Mm -hmm. my God. Loved every minute of it. Got to come and see my dress and just, it was, it was so cute. I was so exhausted by the time this picture was taken. This is my, I was, I don't know. Did you guys pick up on this? I was going for like a sort of Priscilla Presley child bride hairdo. Yes. Did you appreciate that? Completely. Thank you. Yes. And also uh, a deep cut, but um, the bosom matches. If you Mm. find uh, Playmate, 1968, 69, Cynthia Myers. Uh, f- starred famously in uh, Valley of the Dolls. Okay, the uh, movie. You, was, she, I have to assume she's married to Russ Myers. No, nope. no relation. I do not believe, but should have been. Wow, that is a wild coincidence in that case. Yes, uh, had the hair, had the cleavage, oh, had, yeah. had the look. There we go. And uh, you know, just for me. Yeah, sure. That's what I was thinking about. Sure, of course mm-hmm. you were. Hope you mm-hmm. told my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted that like '60s. I, I'm not a like a you know a, the bridal makeup that is usually done, clean face, no makeup, a nice matronly braid. God love you. That's not my thing. Who does I, no makeup? It's not. It's a very. It's called a clean face. Uh-huh. So it's supposed to be very like virginal. I'm not interested. That's mm. not really my no thing. Qualified. Yeah, Thank you're you. super hard up. Thank you. That's what I was going for. I mm-hmm. think that's all the pictures. But the other thing that stole the show, and Adam, I don't think you did it. Brian definitely did because I got the Google Drive oh, of yeah. all the pictures. Um, first of all, can I please just say thank you to Nothing Bunt Cakes in Camarillo? They gifted me all of those Bunt Cakes to give to people, which mm. was so nice. And then Patrick Captarian is a listener. He's like, I got this thing called a 360 selfie machine. Do you want it? Do you, I'll bring it to you. Mm-hmm. Talk about, that was the hit of the night. Photo booths are over. Now it's all oh, the, yeah. the mm. selfie X media machine. Um, I, I Just throw one of them up there. You guys have to see this. We'll put it up and it's on my, it's all over my social media. We'll put it but, up at Corolla.com so you can see all these pictures there. But it, it's, it's, it's so a platform fun. with a camera that spins around at 360 degrees. So it looks like you're going in a circle, but right. you're not. The We're camera not moving. Is, it's really... You know, sort of next level yeah. in the photo cool. booth department, and it looks really cool. People loved it, and of course, I had to pull my favorite one, the one from the uh, gentleman here at the studio. I did like Brian's; he kept revealing more glasses and more hats <laughs> with Christy. But <laughs> but good. the water cooler uh, gentleman here really put brought a smile to my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like this? I it's know, crazy. Love these guys. It's it, it, the the. Video technology we have now between drones and this and everything else is really quite a, quite game changing. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure there were activities because hey, someone. Matt, less know, is more. 
I love that. Oh no, Mala, great! I I don't like to dance, and I, I get uncomfortable like trying to you know mingle. So I wanted there to be activities for people who were like me. Mm-hmm. So it seemed fun. Again, like I didn't really get to participate in jack shit. So, but everyone else told me it was fun. So. I hope good. it was fun. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. I know you were exhausted. Your own wedding is the best party you'll never attend. You know what I mean? Yes. Like you don't get to enjoy the stuff yes. at your own wedding. Mm-hmm. And the the last they said, don't do a cake cutting where you make everybody stop. And I was like, I wouldn't, because you know, as Adam told everyone, the cake was fake. Um, but I'm obsessed with that Nancy Sinatra song, Sugar Town, mm-hmm. and I really wanted everyone to stop and appreciate it. I really tried to make the music fun. Sugar Town. Yeah. Just in a movie I just saw. Was it really? Tammy Faye, maybe? Oh, maybe. It makes sense. Just saw. So, anyway, I had a blast. Thank you, everybody, and thanks for letting me catch up on a little sleep, but get people to the airport. Now I'm back. All right. We will. We we're so up against it now. I'll just I'll tack my toast on to the to this, and oh, you great. guys can uh, listen to it at home. Okay, the Raiders covered. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wedding in the middle of football season on a Sunday. The Rams are playing Tampa. I look at halftime. The Rams so close. <laughs> 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 Yeah, luckily they won, so we can enjoy ourselves. But what if they lost? We'll be in a fetal position underneath the uh, dessert table with the fake cake over it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me real cake, people. <laughs> that facade, that's cardboard, that's not real aged walnut. <laughs> You're not in outer space when you climb onto that. You have to strings on it. So it's all charade. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's not. <laughs> the love. <laughs> the things do have to quit. <laughs> you know, now listen, we're all, first off, what a venue. Yeah. The weather, gods, I mean, per- perfect, not too hot, not too cold, beautiful, the scent of Haas avocados in the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny got a boner thinking about avocado toast right now. <laughs> the protein possibility. <laughs> the SMG possibilities that loom in the air. Yeah, a uh, beautiful day, beautiful night, beautiful people, such a great, uh, diverse group of mainly white people. <laughs> but, the, but the good ones, the ones that care about the other people but don't invite them to their shit. <laughs> the advanced, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I, I think all of us, I, I think I'll speak for all of us when I say, hey, Gina, I, hey, I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach this. I, you root for Gina, right? Everyone loves Gina. Yeah. lot of people, some here tonight, we don't root for on a daily basis at this table. But I'm not saying who, I'm not going down that route. You know who you are. The point is, is you root for Gina. You just want her to be happy. And she has so many great qualities and she's so gifted and so funny and does so many voices and has so, such, uh, like really touched by the hand of God. And you just like, could she meet someone who would synthesize that and bring it all together? And she did when she started working with me. <laughs> no, you know that. I wasn't coming. It just jumped in at the last second. No, I Come on, obviously. Sloppy seconds. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know if it's real first thing. <laughs> all right. And now let me tell you about Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera. Big news. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. The system, U.S. News and World Report, named the best home security of 2021. Well, it just got better. Engineered with the advanced tech and security features to help keep your family safe. Ultra wide, 140 degree field of view. Keep a watch over the entire yard. 1080p HD resolution, eight times zoom, and you can clearly see and capture critical evidence that way. Built-in spotlight with color night vision, two-way audio. You can talk to or scare off someone who's on your property. 
Simple to set up, takes just minutes, doesn't need an outlet, rechargeable battery, don't have to hardwire it. And you can learn more at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Simply Safe is celebrating this uh, new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. That's Simply Safe. Dot com slash M. All right, got some calls up there. I got some more thoughts. We got that Paul Harvey clip. We'll do all that right after this. Pete Lee, comedian, is going to join us soon in studio. Got some clips. Got some calls. I'll tell you what, these people have been on hold for a while, so I want to just hop onto the phones, and then we'll play that uh, Paul Harvey. And now you know, and you guys can try to guess who oh, yeah. he's talking about, which is the fun part. Joe, 52, Seattle. 42, but I'll take it, yeah. Hi, Guy. Hi, hi guys. Oh, Gina, congratulations so much. It, it, it sounds like it was, a, it was a wonderful night. Thank you. I can't wait to hear Adam's speech when I listen to this episode tomorrow. It's, it's awesome. Thank you. Oh, and I caught your uh, easy listening episode over the, the weekend about decluttering, too. That was uh, with you and Teresa. Oh, yeah. Hey, you remember, you were, you're talking... You were talking about going back and forth about decluttering mm-hmm. and used a word that I think is a shoe in for a totally innocuous word that sounds creepy when Mike Dawson says it. Vacillate. Yeah, vacillate. Mm, good that one. Is good. Thank Write you. that down. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Joe? So you were talking about the, the Jory Reed piece on MSNBC about, about missing white women syndrome. And you're also talking about how, you know, it's not just about being white, it's about being young and, and pretty and so on. And I had an idea for maybe a standard that media organizations could try and adopt for how to combat this, which is if you are about to cover a missing persons case, you just sort of check how many, if the, how many similar missing persons case are in the geographic area covered by, by your news outlet. And then if it's a small enough number that you can do them all, then you would sort of you know, commit to giving the same amount of time to each of those. And if it turns out, as is likely the case for larger news outlets, that there's just too many to cover them all individually, then you do my, a more general story about missing persons and maybe direct people to a website where they could go to view all the missing persons cases in their area and see if they recognize someone. But just basically a rule to try and voluntarily give equal coverage to missing persons cases without favoring the ones involving you know younger, white, pretty women. Well, we have... You know, we don't really do coverage commensurate with the event or the person. I was thinking about this. That's how the news works. Like, it was an interesting thing. And basically, we had this drone strike and we smoked seven Afghani kids and three civilians. I mean, we just literally took out a large family with drones. And that was on the news. Mm -hmm. But it got a lot more coverage to the guys on the border with the horse and the reins and the whip and the Haitians. And if you really think about it, one is zero deaths and, to my knowledge, didn't make contact with the Haitian and the whip and the rein. The other seven dead kids. And we're kind of like, eh, they're, they're both equally, you know, maybe a little, little nod toward the guy on the horse and the Haitians in terms of hours if you probably broke down the amount of news coverage for each one of those stories there's probably arguably more with the haitian certainly more politicians making statements about what we need to do about this so we don't fucking work that way we just like certain things kind of tickle our fancy race one way or the other got the blonde chick young you know what i mean It, it, it really i think when it comes to missing people i think i think the rule of thumb is if you found them, would you want to fuck them? And if the answer is yes, we'll look for you. If you're old wow. or fat or ugly or whatever, nah. Are they alive wow. when you find them? Oh. Well, I, this, that doesn't factor oh, in in this, in this well, scenario. That's for me, but do you, do you, man. So if they're uh, young and beautiful and right. fuckable, then that's that's top the story. news. That's the top top of the news. And, and you don't you don't think about all the white women who we don't mm-hmm. care about. But we've seen a few pictures of some of these chicks from Florida that uh, walked into a Walmart and started fist fighting with somebody. Yeah. If one of them went up missing. Eh. Mm. Mm. That that's not getting coverage. Yeah. We need we need sexy. But thanks, Joe. 
Okay. Pre- appreciate, well, I mean, appreciate you're certainly the right that it's a harder problem to solve more broadly, but like, you right. know, disproportionate coverage, just depending on what people find sexy. But this might be a case. I mean, it's more a case if you have to start somewhere. What if they tried adopting a standard? Like, maybe just start just with missing persons. Yeah, but but then imagine, then, uh, imagine if you took the news and you went, you have to cover stories sort yeah. of commensurate, like, you know, if... If the if the ferry overturns in mm-hmm. Philippines and three hundred people died, right. versus uh, the Lakers chartered oh. aircraft <laughs> went down and forty one people died, we have to give equal or more. You know, right. it's just it, it's a weird yeah. parameter yeah. thing. I don't think it's going to work. No, you're asking an inherently flawed industry to do the right thing. That'll never happen. Right. Yeah, and by the way, the right thing for them is making money. Exactly. So if we they get, are doing the right thing. We get a lot of clicks on guys beating Haitians at the border, or a lot of clicks on blondes in Monument Valley. Yep. That's yeah. where we're starting. And you know what they should have said? If you wanted us to cover the kids that got drone strike, should have had a video. That's right. Because that shit's easy to retweet. Easy. Anthony, uh, 28, Pennsylvania. Hey, Adam. What's up, guys? How are you? Hi, guy. Mm-hmm. Hi, guy. Gina, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I wanted to call in because, you know, I've been with the same company for a couple of years now. And just every year you have to go through the sensitivity training and this and that. And this year, the woke bullshit in it was off the rails. There was at least 10 minutes of them literally going through the different genders you could be, you know, explaining what this, that, and the other thing in, you know, it, it was, it was literally insane. There was scenarios, Paul, a transitioning man, how, teen, yeah. a transitioning woman. It was batshit. So how I guess my big, question is, how big is this how, company? Are we just supposed to take it? Well, <laughs> yeah, listen, Snyder. uh, all right. Yeah. All right. couple things. Uh, one is, um, I ask you this, I've asked it. Uh, since we started um, sexual harassment seminars mm-hmm. and having the speaker come to the come to the place of work, and I, I've had to go through this, uh, you, you'll never get this part of your fucking life back. But these fucking blowhard idiots. And but by the way, nobody cares. They're all scared. It's an insurance thing. They have to check the box. We had somebody right. come here. Don't blame us. Right. Uh, we had we we spoke to them yep. and told them it was not okay. Yep. And then they went ahead and got drunk at the Christmas party and whatever. I would contend that there are many more sexual assault allegations or misappropriate sex since we started the speech. So in terms of are we diminishing this, like are we putting a dent? So we have a problem and we want to coach everyone up on the problem. So we start coaching people up on the problem, except for the problem gets worse every year. And it's the same with all the cultural and all the LGBT. It's all fucking nonsense and bullshit. It's a fucking waste of time. It's, it, all it does is repeat this beating of this drum of like, here's who we are. This is what we do. We we oppress people. We 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 disrespect women. We sexually attack women. We we're racist. We're misogynistic. Like it's it's fucking I I would always just say be a conscientious objector. Don't show up. It's like that's like when I when I go to LAX, I I almost never wear my mask, and then they have to tell me to put my mask on, and then I take it off again because it's a fucking waste of time. And the if the rest of you fucking sheep got on board, we could do this, but you're fucking cowards, so you won't. So here we are. This is this is what happens. And everyone looks at me like I'm a fucking crazy person. I just don't like doing shit that's dr- drilled down and mandated on me when it has nothing to do with me. I did not attend the sexual harassment meeting at NBC when I was shooting a pilot there because I'm like, I'm not going. I you you I wouldn't go. Look, if you get popped for a DUI, you have to go to X amount of Let AA meetings. You. you have to go oh. to AA meetings. Yeah. You, you know, you go, okay, here's what it is. It's a, you know, $3,000 fine, spend your license for six months, and you have to attend 10 mm-hmm. AA meetings. Okay, that's it. Because you got popped for right. drunk driving. 
But if you never got popped for drunk driving and you're being forced by the fucking government to attend the fucking AA meetings, then that's fucking government overreach. Fuck you. Everyone should fucking stay home. I don't care about any of that shit. Whenever they do that, like federal law says you have to post this plaque in the back. I fucking wipe my ass with that shit. Fuck you. This is America. I did not attend any of those fucking meetings. And I said, I'm not. I've never been accused of this. I have no place. This doesn't. There's no reason I need to fucking go here anywhere. Why don't you have an axe throwing safety seminar that I need to attend as well? <laughs> Fuck you. But, you know, when I showed up, God, like a week later, I showed up to like the writer's room or whatever. And I like walked in and it was empty. And I was like, what's going on? And they're like, the sexual harassment woman has to come to you and like sit down and do it. They, oh, they have to you. fucking do it with everyone. And I just said, fucking bitch. First off, nice dress. Are those real tits? Said, all right, speed it up. I said, you got fucking 20 minutes. Just fucking regurgitate all your shit. Ugh, these jobs that didn't even fucking exist. All right, we need, we need to be conscientious objectors. Everyone needs to fucking stop doing it. That's it. Don't show up. Don't fucking show up. When they say it's a mandate, it's a corporate, good. Nobody show up. Good fucking luck. They can't do anything. And what about in some companies when they say... Um, we will hold your paycheck until we get a submission from you that you read and followed. Them. Well, as we learned from last summer, when a whole shitload of people want to go do something, there's fucking nothing for That's anyone true. to do but sit back and watch. Yeah. I mean, are we learning lessons from Portland people? You can go down, burn a fucking federal courthouse down, and the cops will just stand by. I mean, when they'll corn it off for you. Once it gets to a level, once it gets to a critical level of more people are doing this than aren't doing it, there's fucking nothing the man can do. Yeah. There's nothing the man can nope, do. You're right. Remember we talked about the uh, great resignation. Like, there's never been a better time to find another job. Like, if this is unacceptable for you and you work at a company that makes you do this, find another company. This is the best time to go work for the company that does the snowflake test. I'm sure they're killing it. <laughs> but the problem is, is it's mandatory for all companies now. Or oh, for, big com it, for big companies. Or anything sure. over, yeah, I don't Any know, 25 insurance. employees yeah, right, or whatever. Right. But yeah, that's that's where we're at. So take a stand. <laughs> it's hard to take a stand alone. That's the problem. You need other people <laughs> to join you in this stand. All right. Knock yourself out, Anthony. All right. Now I'm going to put myself in a better mood with uh, Paul Harvey because... Um, is Pete here yet, by the way? Uh, oh, okay. No. Um, we're walking down Paul Harvey Boulevard. Max Pata calls himself a producer. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> made it to age 37 or whatever you are. Five. 35, but you would have made it to 37. I know. It's not I'm like in the with... next 16 months somebody would coach you up on Paul Harvey. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> well, he got coached up by uh, me in a big way. I took I took a staff poll here, by the way. Nobody knew who Paul well, Harvey was. Have you, Dawson. have you heard of Mike Rowe? Because the way I heard it, his show is a, a direct facsimile of Paul Harvey's old show. And he'll be the first course, to tell you. Of course I've heard of Mike Rowe. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, well, it's a bygone era. I don't, I mean, we looked into Paul Harvey. He had yeah. a started radio when he was like 13 or something. Yeah, he went all, he went all the way to the end. He died it's in 2009 and was wow. doing shows late into his life. Am I the only one? This must be from my father. Oh, and he had his wife who was like Annabelle or Bluebell or, oh, oh was God. What Clara was Bell? His, yeah, he had an old-timey wife uh, name. Lynn Angel Cooper Harvey. Oh, he called her Angel. Yeah, that's what it was. Always, Angel. Yeah. I always pictured him for some reason to look just like W.C. Fields. Does he not? You know, I, I got to tell you, there's this thing. It's the kind of uh, let's watch a DVD of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas in June. It's like, don't ruin it, everybody. Yeah. I, I don't know what Paul Harvey looks like. I'd like, like to way. imagine what, mm -hmm. he, what he looks yeah. like. Anyone who's uh, met Tom Likas has been Burned. devastated. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is hey, yeah, let's get tons of poon. Let the theater of your imagination run wild. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, please. Agreed. Yes. All right. So so we will play you. I will not tell you who the subject of These this rest of the story is, but this is tip of the cap to the great uh, Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. Since early childhood, Nancy Elliott had demonstrated maturity and intelligence beyond her years. But what her family would remember best about her, even as a little girl, was her courage. 
someday she'd need all the courage she could get. Nancy eventually married a lumber and feed dealer named Samuel. They began having children, and the children in the harsh winters of Milan, Ohio, began dying. First a son, and then another son, and then a daughter, all dead. It was during yet another harsh winter in February of 1847 that Nancy, now middle-aged, awaited the birth of one last child. The village doctor was there when the baby arrived. He tried his best to conceal his concern as he examined the newborn infant. But Nancy, despite her exhaustion, noticed anyway. What was wrong, she wanted to know. The doctor spoke softly. He said, your new son has fair hair and beautiful blue eyes like his mother's. But he said his head is abnormally large. And here the doctor's voice trailed away. I fear he may have brain fever. Even though no malady by that name was entirely understood in the 1840s, the implications even to a layman were clear. The little boy would very likely not survive. And in the event he did, he'd probably grow up in the euphemism of the day, defective. So Nancy, weak and frightened, did the only thing she knew how. She prayed. She prayed that God would not take this last child from her. She prayed that if he didn't, and her son turned out to be slow or strange, she would care for him anyway and protect him to the limit of her ability. Well, the little boy with a huge head did not die. As a toddler, when he became a boy of five or six, his behavior proved as peculiar as his parents had feared it might. Repeatedly, seemingly irresistibly, he ran off, endangering himself. He fell into a nearby canal, nearly died in a grain elevator, always in trouble, family and friends sympathetically observed. There were other incidents which, if not life-threatening or even more bizarre, like the afternoon he disappeared for hours, was eventually discovered in a neighbor's shed on a nest that he had made of hay. He was sitting on a dozen or so goose and chicken eggs, trying to hatch them. But then one day in 1853, he set fire to his father's barn just to see what it would do, he explained. The building was destroyed. The entire town might have been if there had been a strong wind. Well, enough was enough. Defective, though he may have been, the child's indifference to the consequences of his actions must be cured. So Samuel notified the neighbors the following morning in the cobbled village square he publicly thrashed his bewildered son, an experience that the boy would remember for the rest of his life. As years passed, the defective youngster showed himself to be merely extraordinary. It's the latter condition with which he is most often credited. And yet today you've met the boy born with a huge head whose future seemed bleak at best. The boy caught sitting on a nest of eggs hoping that way he could hatch them. The child, the child who would grow up to give us the phonograph and motion pictures and turn off the darkness all over the world. Thomas Edison. And now you know the rest of the story. Mm. So it's inspiration. Brian slid me a note halfway and said R. Kelly, but uh, I didn't yeah. want to. He was wrong. I was like, hey, we all have our real whiff sometimes. <laughs> um, so I, it's an actually very interesting to reverse engineer someone's life like this because you want to talk about inspirational. Mm -hmm. This is the way to inspire people. Start with that yep. and then go to the reveal. It, yes. It's it's great to see Oprah talking about Hard Knocks growing up, but it's still Oprah. We know right. where it started. We know where she got to. This is It's an interesting way to do it. I, I, I like to listen to, and he's not doing them lately, but the old Mike Rowe ones do the same thing. And one that really sticks with me is this guy who was late for an audition and he didn't want to go to it because he had a meeting of a fellowship of other males in this church basement and he didn't want to miss it and that, you know, he's expected to be there and he doesn't want to be late. And he told the director, you know, during this audition, I'm sorry and I'm late. I, I need to get to this meeting. And the director excused him and said, I, too, was part of that fellowship. I understand. Why don't you go? And lots of really interesting little factoids in the middle. The reveal is um, and he was hired because he was so honest and he was all American. It was the director who was looking for beaver and leave it to beaver and he was in his cub scout outfit and mm. said i cannot miss my cub scout meeting that's and he funny. said that is an all-american boy that's the kind of boy we need for the show and you Jerry think it's going to be like an aa another... yeah you think it's going to be an aa story but those mm. twists are really fun 
Yeah, so there you go. The great uh, Paul Harvey. All right. Uh, Pete Lee, comedian, is here. First, I'll tell you about Liquid IV. You want to work out? Yeah, you want to work out every day. And uh, you want to hydrate? Well, Liquid IV is the way to go. Cooler weather makes it easier to miss signs of dehydration. And flu season, it's uh, coming up. It's important to have your immune system functioning. Plus, holiday hangover season is just around the corner. That's why there is Liquid IV. I always travel with this stuff, throw a few sticks in the bag, especially with uh, sometimes you have a couple drinks on the plane or there's a time change or a time zone. One stick of Liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, as much potassium as a banana, no artificial flavors or preservatives, less sugar than one apple. Flavors. Well, they got strawberry, lemon, lime, pina colada, guava, watermelon. It just keeps going. It's Liquid IV, right, Dawson? Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code ADAM at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code ADAM at liquidiv.com. Well, we'll talk to comedian Pete Lee right after this. Pete Lee in studio. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you having me here. Yeah, it's tall, dark, and pleasant. It's so funny. I uh, I read your book, uh, or actually listened to it. In fifty years, we might all be chicks. Right. And I was like, oh fuck, I think I'm one of those chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm one of those guys that's a chick. Uh, I'm definitely tall, dark, and pleasant. But here's the difference between I think me and some of like the millennial Gen Z dudes. Like I know that I'm sort of a guy chick, and I have a sense of humor about it, and I make fun of it. Whereas a lot of those guys, like, I was at a show the other night and this, like, hipster comic, he was like, you know, I can't even hang out with a lot of my guy friends because of all their toxic masculinity. And I literally went, ugh. I audibly went, ugh. Right. And everyone that he was trying to impress in the crowd also was like, ugh. Like, like, right. like all these male feminists and all these women that are, like, you know, have signed on to this doctrine, they all were like, ugh, we don't like you. We want a guy that can swing a hammer, you know? I'm, I'm wondering, like, who are we doing this for? Like, I it cannot make women happy to have a guy who has no skills around the house. You know, if if a gangbanger hits you up on the street, he's going to step behind you. <laughs> if a car gets a flat, he doesn't know where the fucking jack stand is. Like, what? What do you bring to the table? What, yeah, what, I, why is that somehow... And, and and also like who needs two of you? Yeah, you know what I mean. This is there's there's two of you. Yeah, it's like if, if you fucking are making ramen, you want someone to bring some beef to the party. Why do you want oh more ramen? Yeah, like oh awesome. Yeah, what what's advantageous about and it? By the way, lesbian couples and gay couples, one of them can do all these things. So don't use that as your excuse. Don't hide behind that. Uh, I agree with that. And like, talk to any hot girl at a bar and who's going to be venting about her ex. It's never the ex that met all of her needs emotionally. Right. It's that asshole that like, if he texted her in the middle of the conversation you're having with her, she would leave and go meet him. Right. Like it's there. I think that there is uh, being a desire expressed for the sensitive man that isn't actually what women want. And I've like in doing my stand up, I've studied masculinity. I'm fascinated with it. I think there is true masculinity. I'm trying to be that. I'm a little bit of a pussy. Uh, I'm trying, I'm also like growing and, uh, you know, and, but it's, that's why when I, when I've been listening to your book, I love it. I, oh, thanks. Like, I love it so much. I love that you're, you're speaking from a place that I'm like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of, I well, the problem is, is how I grew up, but then also sort of like what I know people people are capable of and mm -hmm. what people can do, yeah. and it's kind of like, you know, I crawled under buildings and dug footings with a coffee can when I was twenty three. You know, so it's like when I tell my nephew to go to Starbucks to make a run, and he goes, "It's too hot outside" or something. I go, "I know what you're cap. I know what we're capable of doing." Yeah. Why? And and I think you have to be in a position of knowing what 
the what stress what 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 real discomfort is like what it what it yeah. could be I, I like i appreciate the fuck out of air conditioning because i've had so many sleepless nights and tossing and turning mm-hmm. in the fan and jumping in the shower and jumping back on the bed i love the shit out of air conditioning my kids don't give two shits about air conditioning because that's just w- what yeah. is yeah, there's nothing you compare it to yeah and i mean i it's weird i you know i came I de- i'm 44 i definitely came from a generation uh that's similar uh, but like I, I feel like I'm. I sort of have one foot in, one foot out. Like I am sensitive. I'm on Zoloft. You know, like I'm one of. I'm a part of that depression generation. But I also work construction for a summer, and I kickboxed, and I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, and I've taken a punch to the face. Um, you know, so. I feel like I like I understand both you know both worlds a uniquely little bit. Uniquely qualified to uniquely, have this, yeah, to have this conversation. Perspective, yeah, yeah, and like also, but it's funny, you know, you went through what your dad was like, and then my dad was an interior decorator who was like, "Son, it's okay to cry. You can and, go to school and, and cry then, if you want." What was your other dad like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have marriage back then, or was just a partner? <laughs> Domestic partnership. No. Well, here's a here's a concept. Uh, here's an interesting thought. Um, I think we all appreciate this sort of renaissance man, a general archetype, you know, like that would be good, be good at this, be good at that. You're be, Eric Stromers. Be, be diverse. Right. Uh, just did uh, my podcast. With him. Oh, sorry. No, but, Ballroom dance. But all right. But what, what I'm saying is, is at some point we made this shift and the shift for the males was sort of like well, you don't need to repair a roof and do poetry. You need to do poetry and be able to make yourself a bracelet out of wooden beads. You know, and it's like, well, wait a minute. That's both on the both side. That's on the same side of the aisle as all the other. And okay, well, then you could cook. It's like, no, no, you, you're supposed to break it up, not just have it all on one side. That's not diverse. Right. And I started noticing something. About 20 years ago when I was working on The Man Show, I noticed guys talking in a way they never spoke before because and this is when it's, I, it started to seep in. Traditionally, if a guy was telling a story, let's say you're driving and there's a conflict and a confrontation and somebody cuts you off and there's a story there, right? For 10,000 years, it was, you know, I was riding my chariot or my horse and this other guy in a horse cut me off. So I fucking gave him one of these. And then he looked at me and I said, you want to go? And he said, fine. So I said, fucking bring it, dude. And there was that, you know, next thing you know, we're toga to toga and fists are flying. These guys started telling stories like somebody cut me off. I was freaked out. So I rolled my window up. I had no eye contact. I don't want any situation. I didn't want any trouble. And they were. But they were bragging about it. Yeah. That that's the part yeah. that this the part where if that had happened, mm-hmm. and by the way, most of the stories you'd he- heard back in the day probably did go down that way. But they converted them <laughs> yeah, into the sure. macho story. Of course. The guy was too scared to get out of his car once I fucking showed him the guns, you know. Mm-hmm. But then they started bragging about it. I thought, what is going on that we're bragging? And, and I started dealing with guys who were like, oh, my God, don't even ask me to put a light bulb in. I don't even know what the fuck is going on. Don't even ask. You know, and Change thought, a tire, please. Why yeah. are they bragging about stuff they formally did yeah, or should have done? I have a theory about that, too, because the way that men talk shit online, uh, like in comments section, I'm like, oh, you've never taken a punch. <laughs> Like right. you, you're mm-hmm. typing like you've never been punched before. And I came from a generation where we got punched. Me and my brothers, we used to go fight the Blazers. There was three of us, and there were eight Blazers, and we would Clyde win. Clyde Drexler, yeah. and Cliff Robertson. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like yeah, the, the, the whole, yeah, all the Blazers that Jordan beat, we also beat them. Or maybe um, you were the Nehru Jackets up against the Blazers. Yeah. It could have been a different kind of Blazer. So it's a Blazer family. Blazer family. They lived between the woods of my house and their house, and we'd go meet in the woods and we'd fight. And it was something we looked forward to. Like, this like, is in Wisconsin? In Wisconsin, yeah. And so I mean, it, we basically would like the Blazers hated us. We hated the Blazers. It, my mom now works at a flower shop and she's like, she's like, you know, uh, Eric Blazer came in and he said really nice things about you. He's been watching your stand-up. I was like, yeah, I used to kick his ass. <laughs> tell <laughs> and, that motherfucker in yeah, my tell face. Tell him I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that candy ass is buying flowers, you know? Uh, but, uh, but I think like, I feel like I'm from a generation where I took a punch and so many of these these guys, I'm like, you don't realize that if you had that conversation in a bar, you would get your ass kicked. And that's the only reason why you're having that conversation. You would never on disrespect Twitter. somebody yeah. like that. The virtual yeah. bar. 
Yeah. Yeah. Also, people's version of I was in I was in fear. I I didn't feel safe around this person. I was assaulted. This, by the way, nothing rises to the level of assault. I mean, none of what they're talking about. The guy put his hand on my shoulder and pushed me toward the door or whatever. That's that's not assault. Yeah. You're fine. You shouldn't have been fear. This weird it's it's weird, but it's also it's being driven by something and most of what drives shit that guys do is to get laid. Mm. So there's <laughs> there's a thought that I think we thought and maybe currently think that women want this shit and thus we're doing it. I, I don't know what motivates the guy beyond. I mean, ultimately, all roads lead to Pussyville, right? Like, it's just like yeah. that. Yeah. We're motivated by that. Pussyville. Yeah. Wait, was that the theme song to my sitcom? <laughs> That's right. I think it was. Yeah, I the other uh the other night I just I don't know, I was grouchy, whatever, and normally I'd I would like I'd be like, Hey babe, uh uh I think we should get in the car now or something a statement like that. That's not mean, uh that's not pussy, it's neutral. But the other night I go, Hey, get in the car and she goes, Oh my god, I, we we're gonna fuck when we get home. Wow. And she was like she's like, I love the way that you just said, wow. Hey, get in the car. Mm. And uh and I, I wasn't being mean by it, but she liked the assertiveness. Yeah. I think that it triggers something. Like I do think I do think that there's the feminine, there is the masculine. Uh, I think that that, you know, being fair, uh, knowing a lot of gay and lesbian couples, I think that it crosses gender boundaries, we could say. Um, but there is a masculine role and a feminine role, and it's important. You and I are about the same age. I'm wondering if you saw Swingers around the same time I did, because this is essentially the ethos of the thesis of the movie Swingers, which mm -hmm. is Mikey wants to be the sensitive guy, and like I said, all the girls. And Vince Vaughn, more or less rightly, is like, no, girls want a guy, like be like be a dude. Be He's a just the id. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm really happy in my current relationship is that she wants me to be more like that. Like, And when I say that, this is going to sound like a pussy thing to say, but I feel like she's given me permission to just be a man. And yeah. like, like she's not going to be triggered by it. She's not going to complain about it. Uh, there's not going to be a blog where it was like Pete told me get in the car, and I felt <laughs> I felt abused and triggered, and now he's canceled. Um, and and I like that. Like I, it makes me feel like in my personal life. I can just be, I can be the me that I am or that I, that I should be. Well, you brought up the word permission and that's funny, right? <laughs> Before you brought that down, I just wrote it down, which is, I, I think you could kind of distill it down to this. There's this whole movement, it's currently going on, but it was really in full swing a few years ago where it's like, if you would like to kiss your date out on the first date, you have to ask to mm. sort of ask mm -hmm. permission. And guys go, oh, okay, that's what women want. But if you ever talk to a woman, they go, fuck that. Like, I would not want to be with the dude who's asking. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to feel it out, and you're supposed to be sort of coached up and tuned in enough yeah. to understand when it's right and when it feels right or how the date is going or whatever. But permission, we're telling everyone to sort of ask everything and get everyone's approval on everything. I don't think women like that. Wasn't there a no. school, wasn't there a college where you had to get written consent before sex? Yes. I mean, what a fucking, sex what contract. drives you up faster Chappelle than that? Sex contract. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, there was a whole thing going down a few years ago where Ew. you had yeah. to get your lawyer involved, get things in triplicate. Here, initial here. That's right. like a Derek Jeter level thing where he used to, like when he'd take women back to his, his apartment or wherever he was at in, in Manhattan, uh, he would actually have, like the woman would sit down with a lawyer, be videotaped, I consent to whatever really? the hell happens. That I kind of get because he's a public figure, he's rich, he could be... And there's he, probably an NDA His too. life could fall apart, yeah. you know, with, with just, you know, a simple mistake. Wait, isn't that how pornos start? <laughs> <laughs> like with the, the 18 plus girls sitting there. Yeah, I really want to be here. Yeah. I, by the way, my girlfriend, every time I'm on a podcast, she sends me. Oh, shit. All right. This is a good one. Um, so she sends me. She knows that my phone's going to light up. She knows that I'm going to see that it's Nicole. And she knows that I'm not going to be able to resist seeing it. So she sends me tits of some sort oh. to Ooh. distract me during oh, the thing. Nice. Mm -hmm. And every podcast that I've been going on uh, to promote Tall, Dark, and Pleasant, well, I usually i will show the picture. And, uh, and she says that it's okay. Uh, but we try to write something back to her. Mm. Uh, would you guys want to do hers, that? Hers or randoms? Uh, her, like just, let's her, say random know, for the sake of the show. 
Well, well, these are her tits. Oh, good. Oh, okay. These are her tits. These are her tits. She's the coolest girl I've ever met in my life. Well, by all and, means. Uh, but she sent me. <laughs> like, hold yeah. on a second. She sent me when one. I was like thirteen. Somebody had a stepdad who would buy us beer and let him drink it in his van, and we'd go, "That guy's the coolest <laughs> yeah. dude ever born." But then you get a little older, and you realize, eh, I think he was just an alcoholic. It was unemployed. And I'm not He's saying that your girlfriend <laughs> is that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. but there's ways you can interpret taking kitty shots and sending them to folks hey, doing podcasts. Cool, is cool. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe this is going to be one of those things where, like, three, four years down the road, when uh, when she breaks my heart, people will go, "Did you see signs? Yeah, <laughs> this could see, be. Did you see the signs of that? Um, this which, could be one of those. Um, she's a big reader. Uh, she also is a. She's a fan of yours. Um, she was the one. I, w- I was like, yeah, I'm going on Adam Carolla's podcast, and she's like, well, have you read his books? I was like, have you read his books? She's like, I've read his books, and she was like, you got to start off with in 50 years, we'll all be chicks. And um, so we we actually had a long drive to Platteville, uh, where I did the gig last weekend, and uh, we listened to it on the drive, and uh, it was we were howling. And um, uh, at one point, so I haven't had. I don't know that I've had a cool girlfriend in a long time, but at mm-hmm. one point in listening to your podcast, and I don't think it had anything to do with you, she, so she had like kind of pre planned on the drive that she was going to give me Roadhead. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. so I was like, she was like, what are you going to tell Adam Carolla about the book? I'm like, I'm going to tell him that we put on his book and then I got my dick sucked. <laughs> and uh, he's my hero now. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so Roadhead. That, Roadhead. Roadhead on I 90. Yeah. Were you, while listening to the audiobook? We shut it down. Mm. Uh, That's for the which, best. which I got to say. Uh, you don't want to get a boner yeah. every time you hear him talk. I say, yeah, yeah. yeah, psychological. It's going to be Pavlovian. Yeah. He's, he's going to be like, <laughs> and, and these fucking people. And I'm really like, oh, I'm oh, yeah, yeah, oh, God. <laughs> But she, yeah. So, um, but it was it was like a funny thing that uh, I felt like that was a funny note to to add to this. But yeah, she uh, like she had like leaned over to start the process, and I was like, we gotta mm-hmm. hit pause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <Smart. laughs> so like you're right at the section where you're uh, you're yelling about like you're you're giving it to the right and giving it to the left, mm-hmm. and you're right in the middle of the left, and I I was just like, I this is too much. I yeah. can't I, the arousal. And Confusing. also there was a guy that. Came up behind us that was like like riding my ass in a three lane highway, mm-hmm. and uh, we had to pause the whole situation because I got incensed. I was like, "This guy's like trying to be a part of this." <laughs> Is like, there? A, did you guys ever have that feeling? Like, I used to back. Sometimes you'd get stoned back in the day. Yeah, and you'd be really stoned, and you'd go, "All right, I'm just going to go out of the house. I'm going to get a scoop of ice cream, and I'm going to come home." And then you'd run into like your principal from junior high or something. And you're like, is this because I'm stoned that this is happening? Yeah. Like, I feel like sometimes, you know, it's not not like roadhead is something you do every 14 miles. This is once every five years. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And you're getting some roadhead and all of a sudden some guy's riding up the tailpipe and you're like, would he be doing this if I wasn't like cosmically who has brought this individual to my bumper? Yeah. What is this? And then he also was driving an Impala. Like, I don't know if you're the same kind of guy I am, but I can tell the headlights of any make and model for whatever year. And I was like, that looks like a... Mo- a modern Impala, maybe a cop car. Right. Oh. I was like, there, I think there might be a cop tailing me mm-hmm. that can see you, your head bobbing. Mm-hmm. And he was taking me out of it. So like, I tried to slow down. He slowed down. Sped mm. up. He sped yeah. up. It was, uh, it was like the best thing combined with the worst thing all in one thing. And mm. then she finally was like, is this not going to happen? And I was like, it's going to happen. <laughs> right. I was like, I was like, this is going to happen. I'm not going to, but isn't that funny? Like, like with, uh, I feel like with women, uh, if, if like one little thing goes wrong, they're like, it's not happening. And with men, we're like, I can power, power through, through it. Yeah. Like, right. like, like I've had friends that, uh, <laughs> that have gone home with a monster and I'm like, how did you make that happen boner wise? And they're like, I did it. It was on. Like they, they were proud that they did it. Hey, I'm sorry. Speaking of the scenic route, are we going to see the titty pig? Oh, yeah. We're going to see the okay. titty pig. So she sent one. Gina, how dare you? Well, Brian passed me the note. No, true. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. he did. So this is the titty pig. I, so she oh, wow. does something that goes along with the theme of the show. I did the DC Improv podcast a few days ago. And uh, and here, I'm going to send, I'm going to show that pic. And then um, I'm going to show this pic. So, uh, all right. This, this makes really good podcasting if I'm doing this. Mm. Uh so she always does something that's the theme of the the theme of the podcast with tits. This is a good woman. This is, she's amazing. 
She's absolutely amazing. What is uh, what is her profession? Uh, she works in tech, and um, she's really Only good at her fan? job. So she's not <laughs> gonna. Oh, she yeah, she works for OnlyFans. Um, uh, she works in tech. Uh, she, I'm sorry, I'm to... I, I, I'll I'll fill the bus in here. First yeah. off, I I like this gal. Me too. Yeah, it's sight unseen because Roadhead takes a lot of trust. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Because if you think about, you know, they do all those those uh, confidence building or team building things where the person stands right yeah. behind you and you lean back and on. That's that's a three. Yeah. But blowing a guy, you know, head under the dash. He's aggravated. Mm -hmm. Impala's up his ass. Yeah. We don't know if he's going to pull a groin or pull a calf muscle and plant his foot down sure. on that or, or maybe stroke out. You right. know what I mean? Go like right just the at, the, at the moment. Of, have, have you ever seen the world according to Garp? That, right. It goes both ways. Right. Yeah, right. But I'm saying like you don't know what's going on. Yeah. That is sort of the equivalent to climbing up to the top of the camper shell while grandpa drives the truck and going to bed. It is. It's trust. It's a lot of trust. And uh, so this is the one I was on the DC Improv. So she does the theme. So this is America. Oh. And that's her wearing a shirt. This is America. Isn't since under it's DC. Boob great? Under she's boob big is so north hot. of the border. She's oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. she's. Look at that. Yeah, she is. Like D cups there? Uh, D, double D's, yeah. actually. Nice. Um, I did a sports podcast. So she did this one. Oh, yeah. So this are, these are Cleavage shots for people that I mean, well, want to be yeah, know, um, accurate. She did send no nip. She did send a tit tit for oh. this one, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, so I did Nigel Barker's drinking podcast. She did that oh, look one. Look at her. She did I the, like this gal. She did the mini champagne she, bottles over the boobs. She did the mini champagne bottles over the full size champagne bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For this podcast, oh, I think she is. I think because uh, this is kind of going along with like the working class construction sort of thing. She sent this where she's wearing a mm. flannel. Mm. So wow. that's this is nice. her homage to Corolla. That's hot, sweet. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We I, approve. We yeah. approve. She's the best. She's when I first met her, my friends they were like, "Pump the brakes, dude! You're moving too fast mm -hmm. with this one." Lock and it then, down. Yeah, and then they met her, and they're like, "Lock it down. If she dumps you, we're friends with her." <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask, cut the uh, brake lines. Yeah. Let me ask a little more about Roadhead. Yeah. Especially after seeing those beautiful images. Yeah. I love that movie you did, by the way. Roadhead. Yeah. <laughs> Which keep in mind, we still have to reply to her, and that's part of the game. Mm. I'm, Does. Does it lead to this, though? Like, if you got a gig in Phoenix and she's going with you and she's like, well, we leave Burbank Airport. And you're like, hey, we should drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's 14 hours. To but we'd be get there in, like, less than an hour if we flew. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, Oregon is closer than you think. <laughs> I feel like it's actually farther away than you think. It's like a good two-hour flight. Well. California is a long coast. By the time you park the car. Right. You go through a <laughs> Security. That can take a while, and it's like a seventeen-hour drive. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of like a Evens push. Out, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. All right. So let me just get this roll of paper towels, and I'll meet you in the car. <laughs> uh, okay. The funny thing is that yeah. if I said to her, "Hey, yeah, I think we should drive," like I think we should drive, she'd be like, "Oh, do you want Roadhead?" Great. Mm -hmm. Like she, she would probably actually be like, you know, I could <laughs> suck your dick on the way to the airport, and then we could just fly there, and I'd be like, game on. I got a fun little. Activity for you, for you since you're, you're such a young couple and yeah. vibrant and everything. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people have like the rattan sex swing with the hole in it and all them, that yeah. kind of stuff. It, it can be a little bit of a tell when the parents come to stay for the yeah. weekend and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you, a lot of cars, a lot of SUVs that have the third row or like vans and stuff, you can pull the whole seat out. Oh, yeah. You can just take the whole row out and throw it in the entry hall of the house. What I'm saying is like every day could be roadhead for you. Pull out that third row, plant it in front of the TV set. <laughs> None of the pressure of having to drive. Get one of those Fisher signal. Price steering wheels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all the perks of roadhead, not looking for the man. Radar detectors lit up like a Christmas tree. Distractions <laughs> abound. You know, you're watching Sports Center. You have you have the privacy and safety of your own home. That's good. This you know is what I mean? this is brilliant, and I think she would be into it. Yeah, maybe it's like she just likes the feel of the bucket seat with her knees. I don't know. I, in my world, you couldn't just sit down and get blown in the living room. You'd have to sit there. You'd have to get like in and out drive through. Mm -hmm. Like you just get that cardboard thing, put mm -hmm. it on your lap. 
have yeah. a little conversation about the imaginary destination. Really create the scene. Yeah, yeah. really make the scene. Yeah, maybe somehow like uh, do like a screen recording of your GPS talking. Oh, you know, you that's good. Do the good. screen record on the iPhone. Turn mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Turn right. Turn left, and she'll be like, "Oh, you're really driving. You're doing it." <laughs> You're, uh, yeah, um, I could, uh, I, I just got a Tesla, so, um, I could even record, I could audio record some of the like, boop, 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 when you're getting, like, when oh, a car's cutting you right. off, I can do that kind of stuff. Very good, I yeah. Do, I do, I, I got a Tesla, a friend of mine, uh, basically gave me his extra Tesla. Uh, mm. I got, I'm the luckiest person in the world, but it's got a deep tint, and so for a long time, she was like, I want to, she's like, I want to blow you in your Tesla, and I was like, that is the most romantic thing that I've ever heard. By the way, I think that there's men's romance, and I think there's women's romance. Like, women's mm. romance is like flowers and candy. Men's romance is just the dirtiest shit you could say to a guy mm-hmm. like I, I we went to hawaii and i was already there before her <laughs> I see I, that coming you yeah. can drive to hawaii <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a huge body of water between no us and No one does it, but it can be done. Really? I don't, I've never seen a road between uh, here and Maui. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Let's just get in the car. Let me get the paper towels. Okay. <laughs> Isn't there a ferry that goes to Hawaii? I'm pretty sure. You got to drive <laughs> to the ferry. It might be, I've heard of it. Yeah, it might be 10 weeks, but uh, I think, if, you know, a we're going to be there for three days. You stay so. in the car when you get on the ferry. You don't get out of the car. <laughs> yeah, you're just living in your car for that right. 10 weeks to Hawaii. And, yeah, on your naval voyage to mm. Hawaii. So uh, sorry, Tint, Roadhead, uh, tint, how, Tesla. Men's Romance. We, we, she was she was coming to Hawaii and uh, and I was with a bunch of my friends because uh, I was at a wedding there and it was like a weekday wedding and she couldn't go because of her job. And uh, so I was about to go pick her for, up from the airport and she sent me a text that said, I can't wait to suck your dick on that island. And mm. I showed it to my friends and it, we were like a group of gals at brunch. They, they were like, like, like this is I think so she's sweet. the one we can't, they hadn't met her yet they're like we can't wait to meet her and I'm like fanning myself like I know I know she's that great and uh, but that's like like for any of the women listening like if you're wondering what to do so much, so many of my friends that are female are like I don't know what to do I don't know what he's interested in just be as dirty and nasty as possible mm. do the thing that society and all of your friends are telling you not to do right mm. now and this is a asterisk if the guy is good and he's deserving right. and and he will you know you feel safe with him and da, mm-hmm. yada 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 but like um but just say the nastiest shit to him and he will be like i want like he'll send you a ring emoji back that's what i did i literally sent her a ring emoji and mm-hmm. my friends were like whoa that's serious <laughs> I think that was a good move. <laughs> I like that all your friends are so husky with their voice. You know, they're all smokers. Yeah, it's a good yeah. move. Yeah, it's a good move. Tim, my, Tim Allen from 1989. Yeah, my my friend, uh, my friend Nico. Um, he actually is the one that I was in Hawaii for his wedding, and he. Uh, it's funny. He's like he's like he looks like a surf Viking. We we all live on the ocean in this community in the Palisades, and we all go surf together. And uh, he was marrying a gal who is from Hawaii. And he's one of those guys that like wears like male yoga pants, not the not the um, like female yoga pants, but like you know the ones where where they're like kind of billowy and flowery, yeah. And and so when little I harem-y. yeah, a little harem-y, uh mm. like a little man bun kind of a thing. And when I first started talking to him and his wife in my neighborhood, I was like, oh no, like I got I got to be real careful when I talk. Like uh, like I I didn't know if I said the wrong gender pronoun, if I like they were gonna put me on camera and cancel me kind of mm-hmm. a thing. And then they told me that they were Trump supporters. And I was like, oh, I didn't vote for him, but I fucking love that you guys are that because now I don't have to watch my mouth around you. Now I don't have to be careful around you. Like I I was way happier that they were super right wing than they were super left wing. This it's is just blowing better, my mind. It's just better to have a drink with man bun, hammer pants. Trump supporter. Yeah, the man's oh, an enigma. Hard math. He is an enigma, and his wife is also very breezy and um, carefree, like California hippie Trump supporters. And but I, wow. I couldn't have been more. Um, I remember they they were like, "Come over for dinner," and I went over for dinner, and I was like, "What is this dinner gonna be?" And I was like, "All right, just prepare to eat vegan and shit your pants in the middle of dinner because it's got way too much fiber for any meal." Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they just like were cooking steaks, and then I started having a beer with him. He started talking about like what he was into and and politics. And normally you don't want people to talk politics at the dinner table. I was like so relieved. Wow! Uh, it does it seem uh, maybe it's just me, but. St- 
I feel like steak was such a rarity when I was growing up. Now I have a horrible family and I understand all that, but still, even with other families, mm-hmm. it was like steak night. It was a thing. Yeah, it's a big ticket Just item. even beef was like a yeah. thing. Doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. Everyone's just having it for lunch. And you know what's counterintuitive about that? The quality has gone up with the frequency. You're like, oh, maybe the quality goes down, more people can access it. No, no. There's like Snake River Farms and every staking order in the mail, and it's amazing. Yeah, what's the cube, the old kind of cube kind that your mom just throws in with potatoes and oh, carrots? cube steak. That's, is that what it is? I think there yeah. is a like, cube, yeah. Yeah. cube steak. Yeah, that between was, that and ground beef. That was like shank yeah, for that's making what we stew. Had. Like, yeah. you can eat this, but it has to boil in broth for 21 yes. hours Check and with then us tomorrow. maybe you can penetrate it with one of your incisors. That's what we had. That's how it worked. Yeah. Like, there was nothing, if, if something was rare, it was uneatable. Un- yeah. yeah, unedible. Yeah. And yeah. when you're at the steakhouse and they have the steak with the chart of the cow where mm-hmm. all the cuts come from, tenderloin, whatever, there's no part of it that says cube. So <laughs> it's like a mystery. <laughs> you're like, is this leg meat? I have no idea what this is. All right, well, let's come up with a reply for your, your girl. I'll, yeah. I'll get my X chair. I'll buy you guys a couple of seconds with that. Now, let's are the parameters of the reply. Sorry, we've got a picture, beautiful cleavage, uh, lumberjack, lumberjack oh, yeah. shirt, flannel, flannel, yeah. flannel uh-huh. shirt on. Flannel shirt, construction. Uh, her hand is a little bit down in this area. In the yeah, groin the area. Uh-huh. Region. Mm-hmm. I've Laying got in wo- bed. I've got wood. <clears throat> I've got wood. Yeah, That's I like good. That. That's starting spot. Lumber. Mm-hmm. We can beat that. It's a lumber mm-hmm. yard over here. That's right. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll think for a minute. Yeah, we can, yeah, okay. we can spitball. All right. <laughs> First, I'll tell you about uh, x Share. If you've ever been uh, behind the wheel of a high-performance sports car, you know uh, you never want to go with the regular car ever again, and that's the way I feel about the X chair. My X chair, that's so nice. I, I, by the way, bought an X chair before this campaign. I've had an X chair for years. You can uh, so much better than your current office chair because can your current office chair give you a massage or heat or cool you down? X chair can with the LMX message. Uh, sorry, massage, LMX massage and temperature regulation exclusively designed for X chair, plus the customized support of X chair's patented dynamic variable lumbar or DVL. Try X chair and do it for yourself risk free 30 days. Once you realize how much better your chair is your X chair, you'll never go back. It's X chair, right, Dawson? Go to xchairadam.com now. That's the letter X, chair, 80 am.com for $100 off your order. X chair is a 30 day guarantee of complete comfort. xchairadam.com. All right, so we got the tit shot. That's Give it the best voice I've ever heard in my life, by the it way. It is. I feel like I could be myself and have that voice. I could be like, I just want to snuggle tonight, you know? And like, <laughs> <laughs> that is the, that is the, wow. Did you come out as a baby and were you like, wow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot kids made that sound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just Lucille Ball. Wouldn't she do that? <laughs> she went, <"Wah>, Winky. <laughs> goo goo gaga. Imagine pitching that like in today's sitcom world. Like, hey, wife. You don't get your way. Like, let's say you burned your husband's waffles. Now you just break down with baby, baby wah voice. Why would I do that? I mean, because you're a woman. But if I burned his waffles, it's probably because he did something problematic. Now he works. Okay. And brings home the bacon. Mm -hmm. You fry it up in the pan. Do I work? I work from home. <clears throat> you get up early. Okay. You, you have separate beds because you don't want to disturb him when you're getting up. He's weird. at the club. He's at the Copa playing the conga drum. Oh, he comes home late. Yeah, he gets up. He wants his waffles. You burnt the waffles, mm-hmm. and you're very upset. And you break down and cry and make a wah noise, like a like an actual a baby. infant. Yeah, because you're the, you're so upset because the, this is your everything, and you burnt his waffles. I can't just apologize and just start a new mix. Of well, batter. if you want to taste the back of his hand, I do not. So well, as then a, get to crying. Okay, so as an adult woman, burn the waffles. I, whoops, I burn. Yeah, that's good. Is it like that? Well, you're at about 14 months. I'd like you more about nine months. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Mix that or burn the waffles. 
Yeah, that's good. That, that was great. Very upset. This is like a. You no, did a, bring it down five months. I though. tried. That was sweet. That was uh, really great. I feel like if that was a modern day sitcom, they would focus group it, and they would be like, they found that uh, Lucy was sort of otherizing herself right. by doing right. that. She was being ableist and yeah. ageist. Yes, exactly. Well, and we can't do that. It's kind of interesting in that, from a societal standpoint. You know, they couldn't say the word pregnant. Right. They couldn't sleep in the same bed. Like, there's a whole bunch of shit they couldn't do back then. And now there's a whole bunch of shit you can't do now that they could have done then. Right. They, yeah, they could smoke in their apartment. <laughs> you couldn't. couldn't I, I there's more say, shit you yep. can't. Like, we make fucking fun of them to no end. Like, oh, my God, two beds. Uh. They're going to be future generations are making much more fun of us for not being yep. able to do anything on sitcom. <laughs> Here's the trade. You have to say with child, but while you're super pregnant, you can have martini and two cigarettes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We weren't in in 2022. They weren't allowed to say husband. Right. <laughs> that right. was a really bad word. Well, again, we're always gleeful and we and, and dismissive. We go, oh, those people like, look at them. How so stupid archaic. were they? Yeah. Our grandparents were fucking dumb. Oh, believe me. You know how much of that shit we're going to get with mm -hmm. birthing person? And yeah. whatever, one with fallopian tubing, like these these distinctions yeah. for yeah. women, it's we will be nonstop ridiculed by by future generations. Yeah, and I I grew up with a mom who was heavily involved in the feminist movement, and so I grew up with that dad, and then uh, heavily involved feminist mom. So I my mom was having me read like feminist literature and all that kind of stuff since I was a little kid. So all these debates <laughs> that we're having in society that are kind of annoying to us, I was having those on the way to school as a kid wow. and so like i i saw this coming like i i just didn't know that it would really be as widespread as it is but funny fact uh my mom actually went to work for gloria steinem when she was in wisconsin and mm -hmm. i went and worked with her and my mom is no longer something that she categorizes as a, as a feminist um, my mom uh got into an argument with gloria steinem right in front of me and she quit and she was like she's like look you're this you're this lead of the women's movement but you're treating all the women that are working for you this whole month like shit oh, wow. like you're no different than a male boss and also you're you're nothing but like you're nothing but an ambulance chasing lawyer who is out for your own self promotion you don't really give a shit about the women's movement you want to to popularize the brand of Gloria Steinem and that's what we're here for. And so my mom became a little bit dif disenfranchised with the feminist movement. And she was like, I'm, she's like, I want things to be better for women. But she also was like, I want it to be better in a more logical way. And I want it to be, uh, and I, I see a lot of this. You're privy to this? You're present? Oh, I was standing right there with my mom. And my mom is an introvert. So for my mom to tell off Gloria Steinem, it had to be very egregious. In a thick Wisconsin accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Gloria, you know, you're no better than the men, the, <laughs> than a male boss. But I, in that it, that was actually a great turning point in my life because the debates got better or the conversations got better mm -hmm. on the way to school because uh, my mom wasn't kind of just preaching from propaganda from this doctrine. Yeah. It was much more logical. Um, still, you know, I, I mean, we can all say that things have been things have been fucked up for women for a long time uh, and things need to be better for women. And I think men can be better. But uh, that being said, I don't know that the current doctrine is uh, is necessarily the thing that's going to solve it. And I also like I see pictures on social media all the time of that bitch Gloria Steinem, and <laughs> I still think that she's out for herself. Like my friend Amy, Amy Schumer is in like Instagram pictures posing with her, and I'm like they're both grandstanding right now. You know, like it just is. Uh, I, I don't know. I I think I got. I relate because my mom tore Rosa Parks a new asshole <laughs> when I was nine and I was there. And it was a lot of thematically, uh, there were some subtle differences, yeah. but this a lot a of them. This is a memory. We've never heard this before. Yeah, not talked about it before. This wasn't in the book, even in the riffs. Um, <laughs> well, well, mom always said, you know, you have to forget we had this conversation. I uh, want you just tell her that uh, you've been talking to me about your intimate life, and I, I just want to know if it's cool if I get a lift to the airport. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm like, I'm going to tell him that we put on his book and then I got my dick sucks. <laughs> and uh, he's my hero now. Uh, wow. wow. Yeah, so Roadhead. Roadhead on I-90. Yeah. Were you, while listening to the audio book? We shut it down. Mm. That's uh, for the which, best. Which I got to say. Uh, you don't want to get a boner yeah. every time you hear him talk. Yeah. Yeah. 